Here we are, we are. I make no way. Hello, everybody. Hi, children. Welcome to our webinar. Are you ready for a good revision? Teacher Graham can rename yourself. We got two teachers here. Okay. Hi, the children. Want to say hi to Teacher Joe and Teacher Graham so that I know that the chat is working. Thank you, Miss Jermaine. All right, a lot of hi. Okay, for a start. Uh, can you tell us your primary five or primary six children? Yeah. All right. Thank you for the thumbs up. Oh, we got P4 here. Okay, we got P4. Okay, my daughter is also with us. She's P5. She's also doing revision with you. <laughs> Hi, Clara. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, let me just start. Hi, Xander. Okay. All right. We got quite a number of you. Okay. Some of you will be in a bit later. It's okay. Okay. I hope that you have the worksheet with you. Okay. If you don't have, don't worry. All right. So this is a, we are having a free lesson today. All right. With me and teacher Graham. And we're doing two topics. Do you know which are the two topics? Can you type for us? Which are the two topics, children? Let's see if y'all know. What are the two topics? Oh, Andrea, Ichen. Andrea, yeah, half correct. All right. Okay, it is. Yeah. Uh, I can see my daughter, unfortunately. Let me just stop her. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Singing is water and electricity. Very good. Water and electricity. Okay, very good. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Zebedee, right? Okay. So, all right. So here we are going to uh do uh two things, okay? All right, first, all right, children, you have to get your notebook or your worksheet ready, okay? Because there will be a lot of notes to take. And secondly, I want to keep an open mind, okay? This is not just any other class. There will be a lot to learn. We'll be sharing a lot of good things with you, all right? So if you are going to have your WA on these two topics or one of the topics, we are very sure that you will learn, right? Just like teacher Joe's daughter, she's going to have a WA on Thursday on water cycle, okay? Yeah, get ready your notebook. Thank you, Miss Jermaine. Okay, so I'm going to start first with a PowerPoint slide. Okay, so that day, it's okay. Even if it's over, you can also uh, learn, learn good things, right? We are very sure that you will, you will enjoy yourself today, right? I'm very scared of my PowerPoint because that day, uh, it, was, it doesn't want to work on me. So let's see today how it is. Okay. Okay, teacher Joe is going to put on the PowerPoint slide. Okay, can you all see my PowerPoint slide, children? Yes? All right. Okay, let me see. Everyone can see? It's all right, Clara. It's all right, you can listen. Okay, so today is a complimentary live uh, lesson, one hour. All right, all right. So let me introduce. I'm teacher Joe, and this is teacher Graham. Okay, we are from Blue Tree Education. And so a lot of people ask what's Blue Tree. Uh, so teacher Joe just do a quick introduction, okay? So Blue stands for clarity and wisdom and tree is like the foundation. That's why today we are doing this because we want all of you, okay, to gain a lot of wisdom from our lesson. And also after that, uh, build a good foundation in your skills so that you can score the best possible result for your science. So here, this is our philosophy, okay? We believe in thinkers, learners, achievers. We believe that all of you are capable of learning and you're capable of achieving and you're definitely capable of thinking critically. You go like, oh, really? Are you thinking of this? Wow. Yes, really, okay? So our Blue Tree students are the best students in the world, the most capable. And that's what we want to put you, okay? In at here. <laughs> Okay, so here, okay, Blue Tree, we are nine plus years in helping students to excel in PSLE. So we're very, very well known for math and science. We have proven curriculum for more than 20,000 students, SM success. Our AR1 and 2 is 
a very high percentage at over 80% for math and science, okay? So if you, it's your first time knowing Blue Tree or you're a Blue Tree student and you do not know, uh, children can go to our website. Uh. Our website has a lot of free materials, a lot of free materials. And you can also access to some free lessons on YouTube, okay? So when you want to do your revision and you're not sure, you can always go to our website, all right, to look at the free learning resources. And finally, we have more than 1,000 testimonials like by parents and you, okay, who has uh, very kindly left us very good review about Blue Tree education over the years. So don't worry tonight, you're definitely in good hands, okay? Well, we're going to begin our introduction to Teacher Greer. This is Teacher Graham. So nice. Okay, so Teacher Graham. Uh, Teacher Graham, want to introduce yourself? Hi, students. I'm Teacher Graham. And I've been uh, teaching since the year 2008. <laughs> yeah, so that's many, many years of teaching now. And I'm uh, in Blue Tree for a couple of years now. And uh, we actually is trying to help the students, all right, to uh, let you all learn more, learn more knowledge and able to help you all with uh, un answering your school uh, questions and help you with exam revision. All right. Yeah, I hope everyone has a good uh, learning trip today, like a learning journey. We have a good uh, learning trip in today's lesson. All right. So we all know the primary science syllabus. All together, children, there are 32 topics. So uh, electricity is under systems and uh, water and its three states is under cycles. Now, if you are primary five, all right, these two topics, right, are definitely key topics that you need to learn. If you are primary six, right, it's the same. They are also heavily tested in PSLE. In fact, water and its three states, right, um, it's quite a favorite topic uh, in PSLE, all right? Okay, so you definitely need to know them. Uh. There are five teams in PSLE, all right? And also uh, 32 topics, okay? Uh, these are the number of topics across. Okay, so the PSLE format we all know, which is the same if you are primary, uh, primary five, okay? 28 MCQ and 12 open-ended. All together, you have one hour and 45 minutes. So are you ready? You are right. All right, Teacher Graham, it's to you. Teacher Graham will start. See you in a while, children. Okay, I need, uh, sorry, the uh, screen sharing rights. Yeah, okay. Yeah, here yeah. goes. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay, so over here, we're going to start with water in its three states. All right, can everyone see my question on the screen? All right, yeah. Okay, first up, we have a very uh, usual and common question. Okay, so you can see that there is uh, three states, which is uh, ice, water, and S. Okay, so over here, we can name this. All right, this would be your solid. Yeah, I'm sure you all know this. All right. And in the middle, we will have water, which is obviously the liquid. All right. And for S, okay, it's not mentioned. Okay, usually we will have solid, liquid, and gaseous state. All right. So we will assume that this is, uh, we can put a note there and say that this is probably the, yes, Lewis. Yeah, as a, as a, I'm sure you want to answer that it's a gaseous state, right? Okay, so it's gas or gaseous. All right. And what would be the processes? Okay, so obviously from ice, if you take out the ice cube from the fridge, okay, you place it on your hand, and very soon you will feel that eh, that's a lot of like water, liquid. All right, so obviously this process here is what we call melting. Okay, and then from water to the gaseous state, we will have, anyone can answer this. We have two processes here. Okay, you can type in the chat. I see boy evaporation, boiling, great. All right, good job. Okay, so this process here will be, there's two processes, evaporation 
right? And boiling. You can put that down. All right, and at the bottom, we have condensation, which is from the geisha state, all right, uh, after it has lost it and it condenses back into the liquid state, all right? And then from the liquid to the solid. Okay, who can help me with question, uh, with process Q? I'm sure you all know this as well. For process Q. Yes, I see. Thank you, Phoebe. Thank you, uh, Aaron. Thank you, Hui Wun. Yes, thank you, Sherlyn. Yes, it's freezing. Okay, so this part will be freezing. All right, once you have listed out all these uh, processes and the states, then it will actually help you to answer the question very easily. All right, can all of you type your answer in the chat? Is it option one, two, three, or four? Very good, you got it right, it's four. Okay. I got this. Thank you very much. Okay, you can just answer the questions in the chat. All right, that's great. Okay, let's move on. Uh, anyone is still copying this? All right, if not, I will just move on to the next question. Okay, over here for question two, we have Rian put some uh, same amount of water of the same temperature into each of the containers F, G, H, and K. She placed each container at different locations with different temperatures. An hour later, she checked the containers at their locations and observed the water droplets shown in the diagram below. Okay, for this, to answer this question, we need to understand about condensation first. Okay, this process of condensation, what happens? Okay, and the key concept that we will have is, okay, you can write this down, warm water vapor, Okay, loses heat to the cooler surface and condenses into water droplets. Okay, this key concept we must know first so it can help us to answer this question. All right, and when that happens, you realize out of the four beaker, there is one that there is no water droplets at all. Can you identify that? Is it F, G, H, or K? Okay, very good. It's container K. So you will realize that if this is water and we take it, water is at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, let me write this down. All right, water is at 25 degrees Celsius. Right, if the water is at 25 degrees Celsius and there's no water droplets forming, so the surrounding temperature should also be 25 degrees Celsius. All right, okay, next let's look at the other beakers. So you will notice that, oh, this one has some condensation forming over here. Okay, this one has a few droplets over here on the outside. So usually it's the warmer water vapor, okay, losing heat and condenses on the cooler surface. So is it hotter on the outside or hotter on the inside? You guess it correctly, it's hotter on the outside. Okay, it's hotter on the outside. Okay, so which means the outside area here is hotter and the inside, the water is cooler. All right, with that, we can gather that for H, all right, the surrounding air is hotter. All right, now, if you look at beaker F, okay, beaker F over here, this one has many, many water droplets forming, much more than beaker H, correct? Okay, so over here, uh, we also understand that when the temperature difference is greater, when the warmer surrounding air is much, much warmer, okay, it will lose us heat quickly to form, uh, to condense into water droplets. Okay, so over here, this must be much, much warmer. Okay, the surrounding air will be much, okay, much hotter. 
You can write this down. Okay, this is much hotter. <clears throat> All right. And left with beaker uh, G. Okay, beaker G, you can realize that the water droplets are actually forming on the inner sides. Okay, these are all forming on the inner sides of the beaker or the container. Okay, usually, where can we see this uh, situation? Anyone open their house refrigerator quite often? Yes? Okay, yeah. So if you have a bottle of water, okay, it can be any just normal water, or it can be a fruit juice, or it can be any uh, beverage that you store in your fridge. Okay, after keeping it in the fridge for some period of time, okay, you will realize that there's actually water droplets forming on the inner surface of the bottle. Okay, so which tells, that tells us that the Baker G must be placed in a colder place. Colder than your room temperature. Okay, yeah. So we will know that this is much colder. The surrounding surrounding air or G is much colder. All right, much colder than twenty five degrees Celsius than room temperature. Okay, then twenty five degrees Celsius. <clears throat> yeah. So answer, answer is two. Uh, no, not really. I'm going to give it a try again. Yes, Lilian is correct. Lilian got the correct answer. Angela is correct. Okay, so it should be, all right, they asked for highest temperature of the surrounding it means it is much warmer. Okay, so this one will be the hottest. All right, this side is the hottest and this side should be the coldest. All right, and remember, because we are comparing more than uh, three or more locations, so we must use the superlative, which is coldest and hottest, and answer will be one. You get it correct? Okay. All right, next, I'm going to move on to question three. Okay, question three over here is a typical uh, water cycle, okay? Uh, the water cycle, and it's uh, shown over here. As you read the question, they say it represents a water cycle. A, B, C represents the different processes happening in the cycle. All right. And if you read the question, they are asking for which of the following statements are not correct. Okay, not correct shows that it is a naughty question. Okay, it is not your usual question. Okay, usually the question will ask you which statements are correct, but this is asking for not correct. Okay, so you take note of this, yeah? All right, so over here, we will know that from C going to water vapor, which is a process A, this is under evaporation. Oops, okay, that is under evaporation. All right, from water vapor to cloud. Okay, remember, huh? this is your liquid. Okay, water vapor, this one is in the gaseous state. All right, cloud again is your tiny water droplets. This is in the liquid state. All right, so this process B here will be your condensation. All right. Now, you realize for process C, from cloud falling down as a rain, which is still in the liquid state, this is still in the liquid state. Okay, is there any change in the state? No, huh? from liquid state to liquid state, it's still the uh, same state, there's no change. All right, so uh, in process C, there's no uh, change in state. All right, so if you look at the question over here, they say at A, the surrounding air gains heat for evaporation to occur, this is correct, okay? At B and C, there is a change in state of water. Just now we realized at process B, there is a change in state because from gaseous to liquid. But from uh, at point C, from liquid to liquid, from clouds to rain, there is no change in state, okay? So this statement over here, when they say there's a change in state, this part is wrong for C. Change in state of water for C is wrong. Okay, 
Yes, and at B, water loses heat to the surrounding air. Okay, at B, water loses heat. Ah, this is a naughty question again. Okay, it's not water that loses heat. It is water vapor. Do you manage to catch this? Okay, so this statement is also wrong. It's not water loses heat. It's the water vapor that loses heat. Okay. All right. So answer is three. Very good. Well done. All right. Good job, Corinne. Good job, Charlene. And good job, Winston. Oh, Winston. Is it the Winston that is at Blue Tree? Okay. All right, let's move on. Okay, now let's come to the open-ended question over here. All right, at the open-ended question over here. Is everyone good? I'll go, yeah? Let me continue. Okay, so over here we have uh, this question. It says that Ellie placed a cup of hot water in the kitchen and noticed some mist above the water. All right, first of all, can I, I just ask the students, okay, have you seen your parents uh, boiling water or cooking soup before? Yes? Ah, so when you see your parents boiling water with a kettle, okay, or some of your parents, if they use electric, electric thermal flask, then you don't really observe this. Okay, but if it's uh, from a kettle, you can actually observe this very evidently. When the kettle boils, okay, uh, at the spout of the kettle, there will be mist forming, all right? Okay, so first of all, I'm going to ask a quick question first. This mist, can you tell me whether is it water vapor or is it water droplets? Ah, very good. I see Um, that's Ariel, coming from Ariel. Very good. It's water droplets. It's not water vapor, yeah? Some students have the misconception it's actually water vapor. No, because water vapor is gas and it's invisible. We cannot see. So it's supposed to be water droplets. Very good. Okay, so now we have understood that mist is water droplets. We're going to put down this note over here that mist is water vapor. It's water droplets. Okay, this mist over here is water droplets. All right, so what happens? That means the hot water, okay, this part, if you allow me to draw here, okay, I'll show you this. All right, all this that is coming up from the hot water, all of this is your hot water vapor, okay? When this hot water vapor, all right, it comes into contact with the cooler surrounding. Okay, so all this surrounding air here is cooler surrounding air. Okay, now when the hot water vapor loses heat to the cooler surrounding air, it becomes your, it condenses to form your tiny water droplets, which is your mist, which is why mist can be seen. Okay, yeah. So over here, when we answer, state how the mist was formed, okay, we will need to answer this by saying, all right, the hot water vapor from the hot water, okay, comes into contact with the cooler surrounding air. Okay, the hot water vapor from the hot water comes into contact with the cooler surrounding air. All right, loses heat to the cooler surrounding air and condenses to form tiny water droplets. 
Okay. And then last but not least, we must link back to the question. Okay. Hence, missed is form. Can you get this? Oops. All right, the hot water vapor from the hot water comes into contact with the cooler surrounding air, loses heat to the cooler surrounding air and condenses to form tiny water droplets. Okay, and you link back to the question, has miss and spot. Okay, let me make it uh, bigger, sorry. Oops. Okay. Angela says the hot water evaporated to form water vapor. It lost heat to the cooler surroundings and condensed to form water droplets. Okay, but then you are not, uh, Angela, you need to link back to the question because it's asked how the mist is formed. So in your answer, you're actually telling about the uh, evaporation and condensation process. Okay, so you need to link it back. You need to say that uh, uh, that's how the mist is formed. Okay, which is uh, what I've written over here. Okay, yeah, you must link back. Huh? If not, you'll be penalized. Okay. All right. Do it need to be even bigger like this? Okay. Yeah. All right, next one. Let's move to part B. All right, Ellie left a similar cup of hot water in an air-conditioned room. All right, she noticed that there was more mist seen. Okay, the clue... From the question is what? There is more mists. Okay, it's a similar cup of hot water. Okay, but this time round is what? It's in an air-conditioned room. Okay, this is a big clue. Why? Because in the air-conditioned room, the surrounding air compared to the normal room temperature in the kitchen, is it colder or warmer? I'm sure you'll say it's colder, right? Because most of you will hide in your air-conditioned room. <laughs> okay, so definitely the air-conditioned room will have a much, much cooler. Okay, this is much cooler surrounding air. Okay, we have much cooler surrounding air over here. All right, so why there is more mist can be seen. Okay, and we can explain this by saying, all right, Right, as the air condition room, okay, has much cooler surrounding air okay, has much cooler surrounding air so More warmer water vapor. Okay. Has lost heat. Uh, lose heat. More water vapor. Okay, you can use lose heat. Okay, to the much cooler surrounding air, okay, over here, here there is more condensation, okay, more condensation taking place, all right, hence more mists can be seen. Okay, those are so more warmer water loses heat to the much cooler surrounding air. Uh, oh, sorry, condensing into more water droplets. Let me stop this part. Okay. Yeah.
Okay. Yeah. More mess can be seen. Full stop. Do you get this? Uh, scroll up. Scroll up to where? Which one? Part A? All right, are we good with part B? Okay, I'll move on to part C, okay? Yeah, we have many more questions to teach. Okay, over here, explain why the mist disappeared after some time. Okay, explain why the mist disappeared after some time. So it's only the initial part. It's only the initial part whereby uh, when the hot cup of water was placed into the air conditioned room, whereby you will see a lot of mist uh, forming. All right. But after some time, let's say you have uh, brought the cup of hot cup of water into the room for let's say half an hour already. Okay. Why the mist no longer form uh, in uh, in the in the cool room anymore? Okay. So we can answer this part by saying, all right. As the cup of hot water, all right, loses heat to the surrounding air. Okay, as a cup of hot water loses heat to the surrounding air. Okay, the cup of hot water will be okay. Uh, because the cup of hot water has lost heat to the surrounding air, which means now the temperature is much similar and uh as a similar as the surrounding air. Okay, so which is why. All right, uh, the mist no longer forms. So you can say as the cup of hot water loses heat to the surrounding air, the cup of hot water, okay, would have lost heat to the surrounding air, uh, same, same temperature. Okay, and became same temperature as the surrounding air. Okay, hence, okay, the mist no longer can be seen. Yeah, the mist gained heat from the surrounding air and evaporated again into water vapor. Okay. Yeah, the main idea here is to say that the cup of hot water now is same temperature as the surrounding air. Okay, which is why you cannot really uh, see um, the mist forming. Okay. All right, everyone good? Oh, hi, Luke. Great to see you. Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> okay, over here, we're going to apply this, uh, what we have learned over here into uh, real life application questions. 
Okay, uh, often if your school has uh, chairs like this, okay, or even in um, food centers, you can see this, all right. Uh, if they stack up the chair in diagram one like this, okay, uh, the water that is on the chairs will evaporate slower. Okay, yeah, however, if the chair is separated and placed, like how it is being placed in diagram two, okay, one by itself, okay, and firstly, if the chair is being tilted, right? So if there's any water droplets, it will actually slide off the chair, okay? Uh, as a P6 student, you will know this because due to gravity pulling uh, the water droplets downwards, okay, so it will slide off the chair, as well as uh, because there is a greater exposed surface area to the surrounding air, all right? So over here, we need to mention the concept Okay, in the, cons, uh, in the key concepts to learn over here is, please remember WET. Okay, this is for uh, evaporation. Okay, factors affecting, okay, you can put this down as uh, factors affecting evaporation. All right. All right, what does the wet here stands for? Okay, so this will be presence of wind. Okay, presence of wind or water. Okay, and for E we have will be your exposed surface area. Okay, and obviously T would be referring to your temperature, so which is amount of heat. Okay, ah, so we need to use this uh, concept to help us to understand and to answer the question over here. All right, so the question is asking, he observed that the chair in diagram 2 dried faster than those in diagram 1 and explain why. So we can use Okay, we can use uh, E, which is exposed surface area. You can observe, like I mentioned just now, okay, in diagram one, the chairs are stacked closely. So there's lesser exposed surface area. But in diagram two, when the chair is single by itself, there's more exposed surface area. All right, so we will explain by saying, all right, the chair in diagram two, okay, has more exposed surface area to the surrounding air. Okay, the chair in diagram two has more exposed surface area to the surrounding air. Okay. So the water droplets, okay, and gain heat faster from the surround from the warmer from the warmer surrounding air. <clears throat> okay, water droplets can gain heat faster from the warmer surrounding air and evaporate faster, right? And we need to link back to the question. Okay, we need to link back to the question. All right, so you can see that. Hence, okay, the chair in diagram two and dry faster. All right, the chair in diagram two has more exposed surface area to the surrounding air. All right, so the water droplets okay, that is on the chair can gain heat faster from the warmer surrounding air and evaporate faster. Hence, the chair in diagram two can dry faster.
Uh, yes, correct, Angela. Yeah, the chair had more exposed surface area to the surrounding air. Okay, so evaporation occurred faster. You can, you can say that as well. Okay, yeah, and the chair in diagram two dried faster. Okay, all right, next we're going to go to uh, the next part, which is part B. Right, you see another way to dry the chest faster is to place a fan to blow at the chest. Give a reason why this method will dry the chest faster. Okay, remember back to our concept that we learned, factors affecting evaporation, your WET wet. Okay, so there is a presence of wind, right? When you turn on the fan, there will be a wind blowing. All right, so there will be presence of wind. All right, so when there's presence of wind, okay, uh, it can dry faster. Just like if you were to hang your clothes out, okay, on a normal day with no wind compared to another uh, normal day with wind, okay, your clothes will dry faster on the windy day, right? So we can explain over here that, all right, as the presence of wind, okay, can help the water droplets <clears throat> okay as the presence of wind can help the water droplets all right to evaporate faster Okay, as the presence of wind can help the water droplets to evaporate faster. All right. Hence, the chairs can dry faster. Okay, part B is comparing to part A huh? when part A has no wind, but part B has wind. So with the presence of wind blowing, all right, towards uh, the chair, all right, the water droplets on the chair can evaporate faster. All right, and that's the reason why the chairs can dry faster. Okay, did everyone get this? All good. All right. Okay, if everyone has finished copying, then I will pass the time back to teacher Joe. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, everyone say thank you to teacher Graham. I'm going to go to the next part on electricity. Are you ready? Okay, I see that a lot of you ask questions, huh? Okay, so here, it's good that you are asking questions, children. Okay, but just to take note that, um, okay, JT, I cannot wait for you to copy, all right? Because this is a revision lesson, one hour. So you can take a picture, all right? Yeah, please take a picture. Hey, you're yeah, welcome. Yeah, I can see that there's a lot of you asking questions. And obviously, you all know that uh, y'all know the concept very well and then y'all can ask questions. A lot of you ask about uh, the concept about evaporation and then the choice of the keywords. So that one, I was quite impressed. Okay, in fact, I was very busy in the background trying to answer the questions. Okay, so I can see that a lot of you have the concept there. Do take note that these two questions, right, are very, very commonly tested in um, exams, whether you are P5 or P6, all right? In PSLE, they are very common. In fact, that two question open ended the coffee and the chair, they were uh, both in PSLE question before, similar type. Okay. All right, teacher Graham, now I can share. Teacher Joe will go on to electricity and I left 15 minutes. Okay, so children, are you ready? You are ready, ah? Huh? Teacher Graham, help me, help me in the background, right? Okay, Um, I've been disabled. Someone is the host, you need to pass the host to me. Why you disable me? 
Okay, I reclaim the, the, the host. Okay, can. All right, come, children. Let's go to electricity. So for electricity, question six, seven, eight. You ready? All right. So like any good children, always analyze and annotate. Analyze and annotate. Analyze and annotate. You will score. So you must highlight. So you look at this electricity question. They say there are four circuits. You cannot really highlight anything, but you can definitely annotate. So usually for this question, right, I will look at what is the question. They say brightest of the bulbs from brightest to dimmest. All right. So brightest to dimmest, children, we all know the three factors that can affect the brightness of the bulb. What are the three factors? Say it with me. First, number of bulbs. Second, number of batteries. Third, arrangement of bulbs. Do you get these three? Well done. Okay, so let's look at this one. So let's look at um, this one here. I can see that the number of batteries and also the arrangement are different. So it's always good to analyze and annotate. Okay, so I'm going to annotate. So for P, I can see that I have three batteries here. I hope that you know your electrical component. Uh. So like, this, like in this way, this is one battery. All right, this is considered as one battery. So I can see that there are three batteries. So bulb P will light up with three batteries. All right, bulb Q, one battery. All right, then after that, I go down. All right, R, I have two bulbs in series and two batteries. So two divided by two, uh, you need to have some math here, okay? One, All right? So that's the reason why people say when you're good in math, you'll be good in science, okay? Because they are quite, they are BFF, all right? And then after that, you can see set up as, all right, my bulbs are arranged in uh, parallel. Children, I would like you to focus on me. All right, focus on me uh, because I'm teaching you a lot of things at one go. All right, focus on teacher Joe. All right, stop giving me the emoticons. I'm going to count to three, three, two, one, and you focus. Thank you. All right, so here, so you can see that these two uh, bulbs here, they are actually in parallel. So I know that parallel bulbs means that they have their own separate um, electrical path. So this is one electrical path, correct? And I have a second electrical path here. I have two batteries. So two divided by two. So this, is this two divided by two? No. So it means that the parallel circuit, right? The Each of the bulbs have their own electrical path. So this also lights up in two batteries. So you can see that, okay, two batteries. Huh? So you can see that actually, uh, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, right? Quite clear. So the brightest will be definitely P followed by S. And that is either Q or R. So the only one that fits the answer, the only option is one, all right? So for electrical system, right, children, you definitely need to be able, all right, to write down, okay, the number, all right, of uh, batteries that will light up each part. Okay, children, somebody asked me to remove the reaction. Someone asked me to remove the reaction, children. Okay, uh, so I'm going to remove it already. Okay, all right. So can you all please focus on the lesson? Thank you very much. Okay, so here. Okay, so I'm going to uh, say it again. Uh, when it comes to electricity, please arrange them in brightness. But first, you need to annotate the number of batteries that light up each bulb. And you need to know, okay, parallel and series both very well. All right, let's go to the second question. All right, so question seven. All right, so there's a plastic strip. I'm going to analyze and annotate. Highlight plastic strip, okay? So even before I look at the question, children must always annotate, okay? Why you must annotate children? Because in your examination, it is a very, very long paper, okay? And many of you, you cannot focus on the paper totally. Very, I have taught for 16 years children. I have never met a single child who can focus on the paper throughout without annotating, okay? I'm very sure halfway through the paper, you'll go like, eh, which question am I? Eh, what concept is this, all right? Your one hour 45 minutes, children, is a very long time, right? If you want to score well in your exam, you must analyze, you must also annotate, and you need to highlight, okay? So when your hands are very busy, you are actually helping yourself. You're helping your brain to focus. If you do not want to help yourself, then it will be very difficult for you to score. So analyze and annotate children is a way definitely to help yourself. You want to help yourself to score, right? And that's why today you are here. You're all very good children. The fact that you are here with us, Teacher Joe and Teacher Graham, 
means that you are willing to put in effort to do your revision and work on improvement, right? So teacher Joe wants you to score well. So you must definitely analyze and annotate, right? So before you go to the question, right? You see, I already annotated here. I say that this is an insulator of electricity. So insulator electricity means that it does not allow electricity to pass through, right? Andrew, PSLE allows highlighter. It doesn't allow highlighter on your answer. You can highlight the question, right? I've answered this question like for 10 years. Okay. Children, I have teacher Joe say again, uh, PSLE allows highlighter on the question, but not the answer. Okay, you cannot highlight your answer only. So you can still bring in the highlighter, right? So here, let me go on. So his teacher asked him to remove the plastic strip, right? Before using the torch, explain why. So I will definitely highlight the word explain. The question term is explain. So explain means that you must give a reason, all right? I've already disabled the uh, emojis. I have not. I cannot go on, children. Sorry, admin can help me to uh, disable the emotion, the emoticons. Actually, on your side, uh, children, you can decide whether you want to see the emoticons or not. I cannot carry on. You can. You definitely can, children, on your side. Yeah. Do, do we still want to carry on the lesson? Can I have everyone's cooperation not to put on the emoticons? Okay, I have a lot of complaints. I cannot carry on the lesson like that. I'm sorry. Yeah, should I call it a stop? I have like people like JT and um, yeah. Thank you, children. All right, let's all learn properly together. All right, I carry on now. Okay, let's go on. So here, explain why. Okay, yeah. So here, the plastic strip, okay, explain why, okay? So the question term here is explain. So how are we going to explain this? So the first thing I'm going to say is I will definitely have to tell them about what is plastic, right? Uh, I mean, I really need you to help me to, to disable it. I mean, because I have children who are not cooperative. Children, can I carry on, please? I would like to very much carry on, but I have a lot of people uh, complaining. Yeah, so both sides have to cooperate, okay? Did you Joe, carry on, okay? Thank you very much. All right, so here, plastic, all right, is an insulator, right? Or you can say non-conductor of electricity, right? So this is the first thing that you're going to say, all right? What is the role of plastic in this question? Then you carry on, all right, with the right reason, all right? Hence, electric current cannot flow through the torch, right? So you have to say that, hence, electric current cannot flow through the torch and the plastic must be removed, all right? to allow the circuit, to, to, to close the circuit and allow electric current to flow through, okay? Now, so this one here, uh, this part here is actually optional, all right? This part here is actually optional, but this part here, all right, is a key information because they ask you why you must remove it. All right, so the reason is because you need to close the circuit so that the electric current can flow through. Actually, for electricity, right, children, there are only two key phrases. The first key phrase, right, is you must always say that the circuit is closed or open. 
And the second key phrase is electric current can or cannot go through, all right? Can or cannot go through, okay? Are we good? Right, so here, uh, if you have not, if you have learned about the uh, electric current flow, all right, you will understand that the electric current can only flow through when the circuit is closed. Catherine, uh, yes, you have a question? Hi, Catherine. Okay, all right, teacher Joe, go on to the next question. Now, so draw a circuit diagram to represent the circuit when it is switched on after the plastic strip has been removed. Now, usually for a circuit diagram, we use circuit symbols. So I look at the uh, question here, all right? I can see that, okay, the battery starts from here and there are two batteries here. So I have to establish whether the batteries, all right, how they are connected. The batteries are definitely connected in series, okay, in this way. Now, there is a switch here also. Uh, so these are important information. So that means I will need to represent the switch in my circuit diagram, okay? So I have the switch, I have two batteries and I have one bulb. So can you see that I was very careful in my uh, analysis, all right? So I will write, okay, I have one switch, all right? I actually have one bulb, all right? And I have two batteries, okay? So I have to be very, very careful in the way that I'm representing the circuit, all right? So after that, I'm done, right? Then I will go on here to draw the circuit diagram. So the circuit diagram, okay, I will have, right, the, the two batteries, right? Right, so batteries are represented in this way. And I have one bulb, okay, but I also have a switch, right? So usually I will put the switch, right, in the same uh, path as my bulb, right? And the switch is closed, all right? The switch will be closed in this way, right? So this is how the circuit will look like. Right, okay. Okay, are we all good? Yes? Okay, so I, I give you some time to draw. Okay. Okay, teacher Joe, go on to the next one. Here. The, the last question, Lucy set out an experiment and she suspended a steel paper clip between the two circuits at equal distance. So same thing, analyze and annotate, right? So I will highlight the word steel paper clip and then between two uh, circuits at equal distance. Now this is electromagnetic question. Electricity and magnets, right? They are also BFF. They are often tested together. So when I look at the circuit, right? The first thing that I will identify is their difference because there are two circuits. Huh? That means on one, there must be a change variable. So very, very fast, I can see that the change variable, right, is the battery, okay? There's actually one extra battery for circuit X, which means that there's more electric current flowing through circuit X. So what will happen to the steel metal, uh, the steel paper clip? Okay, in case that you do not understand how an electromagnet works, huh? right? So when the electric current flows through, all right, children, Okay, in this way, the, the iron rod will become a temporary magnet, what we call electromagnet. And it will be able to attract the magnetic material. All right, so in this case, it is the steel paper clip. Steel is magnetic. So let's recap what are the four magnetic materials? Steel, iron, cobalt, nickel, right? So once the circuit is closed, all right, the iron rod becomes an electromagnet. So in this case, I can see that circuit X, right, has more electric current flowing through. So the steel paper clip will move towards circuit X, right? Okay. And then I have to explain my answer. So they ask you to explain why the steel paper clip, right, will move towards uh, circuit X, right? So I have to say that, okay, uh, the circuit is closed. I cannot say this, all right, because I, I have to explain why it will move towards circuit X. So the evidence is, I have to say that there are two batteries, okay, in circuit X. So two batteries, how it will result. So we are using our ABC method here. Hence, there is more electric current, all right, flowing through the circuit, 
okay, flowing through the circuit. There's more electric current flowing through the circuit, right? I have to use the word more, right? Because I can see that there are more than one battery, right? Hence, the electromagnet is stronger, all right, is stronger and can exert a greater magnetic force to attract the paper clip, right? Now, two so for forces, right? Uh, those of you who are in P5, you haven't learned yet. Okay, but if you're in P6, right, you, you, come, you will have learned this. So for forces, right, we don't use the word stronger. We use the word greater because forces, right, is not the same as properties of materials, right? So for forces, we use the word greater and we use the word exert. Okay, if you are P5, right, don't worry. Okay, if you are P5, okay, all right, if you are P5, right, you, you can just say that the electromagnet is stronger and can attract the paper clip uh, first, right? You don't have to write uh, this part. But if you are P6, right, you definitely have to write this part. Okay, any questions so far? Any questions? Uh, no need, you don't need to say that steel is a magnetic material because in this question, right, they didn't ask you um, how come the steel can be attracted. They're actually asking you why the steel paper clip will move towards X. So it's actually about uh, the amount of electric current. Okay, yeah. Yes, of course, you can use uh, CER. There's many, many methods. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. We are done with the question. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Teacher Joe will go to the next one here. Okay. Thank you for staying back. Okay, children. Okay. So allow me some time to share. All right. Okay. So if let's say now, children, you are in P5, right? Okay. You will still have, of course, some time. Okay. But if you are P6, okay, however, all right, you will see that uh, you are left with 99 days. Right, about 10 lessons to PSLE. Okay, so this is the typical timeline. All right, so for you today, all right, children, thank you for joining us for the free revision classes. I hope that it has been useful. The few questions, it has actually helped you at least to revise the work uh, fast. Okay, I'm sorry about the emoticons. Okay, we will definitely see to it for the next uh, free lesson. Okay, I will disable it. Okay, because Blue Tree students are usually very, very, uh, very good children, all right? They are very cooperative. So DJ Joe did expect that the emoticons will be used excessively, okay? So I will, I will disable it during the last lesson, okay? So here, our map program, okay, uh, will be uh, here, all right, 27 May to 4th June, all right? So I would really like to share with you, please uh, think about consolidating your skills, okay? So for all of you here, right, okay, uh, our map program has always been very popular and has worked for our students, okay? In fact, 95% of them, right, will say that they improve at least by one grade. Uh, that's amazing if you ask me, okay? So I would really like you to uh, benefit from this, okay? Because the fact that you are here, like I said, you must be very, very good children. You really want to improve, right? So there's two lessons for P4 and P5 for each subject. And if you are P6, there'll be three lessons for each subject. You can do online or physical, all right, so it's during the June holiday program. June holidays, in all children, you have 32 days of holiday. Huh? 32, okay? So are you uh, telling me that you don't want to, you won't, you won't be resting for 32 days? I'm sure no, because you're a group of very good children here, right? So consistent learning is what we want to achieve. We want to make sure that we prepare well, okay? We don't want last minute work and we don't want last minute panic or stress. So we want to consistently do our work well, okay? So during the June Met holiday, we will revise the important topics. We will also teach you some of the concepts ahead for the next term, right? So uh, you will definitely have very fun, meaningful discussion and recap of the concepts, okay? It's more, much more fun than what we are doing today, all right? So some of these pictures is what we do in Blue Tree, all right? So you see the children are always having experiment, having a lot of fun, okay, always happy faces, right? Okay, so 
Sometimes we will even bring them out to do experiment outdoors. Okay, so this is what Blue Tree is all about. We learn things in a very fun and meaningful way, all right? And we teach you how to analyze your questions well so that you can score better in your examination, all right? So the usual map fee, this is the usual map fee, but for you today, children, all right, we are going to give you, okay, uh, up to $40 off, all right, for map program. But it's only for you, all right? Just uh, this week if you decide to sign up. So if you want to sign up uh, our holiday program and you believe in consistency and early preparation, you want to do well for your exam. You are a student who really want to do well for your exam and you believe in it, right? Okay. So tell mommy or daddy, okay, to ask us, uh, ask for more details. So our email is contact at bluetreeeducation.com. Okay. Or, all right, you can uh, call us, all right, at 9, uh, 616, uh, I mean, can you help me to leave the contact details, okay? Leave the contact details, okay? Uh, it's written exam, all right? Written exam, ah? okay, written exam, okay? All right, yes, 99 days to PSLE. Yes, it is, it is, okay? It is 99 days, yes. So for, if you're a PSLE kid, right, you definitely want to, okay, make sure that you do this well, all right? Okay, bye-bye. All right, some of you say bye-bye to me already, all right? So this is for you today. Uh. So call us or contact us, right? So that we can help you further. All right. Thank you for staying back, everyone, per lesson because it's three hours. Yes. Okay. See you, everybody. Good night. Bye bye.